Hello friends, it's time for our next episode of Year of Rex, which is a series I'm doing this year to try and have my best reading year ever, where I get book recommendations from a different source every month and they battle it out <laughs> against each other, A, to find out which source gives me the best book recommendations and also B, to try and help me have my best reading month ever. And today, we're gonna be having a Waterstones bookseller give me book recommendations. <laughs> I am so excited for this episode. This is one of the ones I've been most excited for since I came up with the idea of Year of Rex because I just feel like booksellers know what to recommend. I feel like they have their finger on the pulse. This is what they do as their job all day, every day. I am so excited. I feel so lucky that I'm going to be able to go there and they're going to give me book recommendations. And I'm also nervous because I have no idea what they're going to recommend. If you don't know, Waterstones in the UK is our main big bookstore chain. So yeah, we're going to be hopping over to my local Waterstones. I'm going to give them, I guess, a little description of my reading taste and then they're going to give me book recommendations. So yeah, without further ado, let's get going because I cannot wait. I'm so excited. Okay, so I am here with Virginia, who's the manager of my local Waterstones. Do you want to tell everyone a bit about you? Yeah, um, I've been working for Waterstones for 24 years. I kind wow. of did it by mistake, really. <laughs> I came back from travelling and um, was like, oh, I'll just get a filler in job before mm. I go back to working in London, but I fall in love with it. So oh. here I am, not only in this store, but um, mainly just in the area of mm -hmm. Essex and stuff. But yeah, no, it's it's a great job. It really is. Yeah, <laughs> I've always wanted to work at Waterstones. I'm jealous. <laughs> um, okay, so for the recommendations, mm -hmm. I thought I'd give you a little bit of description of my reading taste, but you're welcome to ignore it and just give me your favourite books right. if you want. So okay. I do read pretty widely in mm -hmm. terms of genres. Um, I say my favourite genre is mystery. I love a good mystery. Okay, right. Um, particularly murder mysteries. I do mm -hmm. love a good murder mystery. So like my basic answers, I do love the Thursday Murder Club of Richard Osman. They're usually like my favourite books right, <laughs> every right, year. Yeah, yeah. But I don't like what I call the copycat Thursday Murder Club books. So I feel there's a lot of them. Cozy and I, crime is a yeah, yeah, I'd say widely, I love anything that's a murder mystery that's like a a, a unique slant on it. So like an imaginative, it's got an extra element to it. So okay. I love a bit of Janice Hallett as well. Mm -hmm. I love mixed media across all books. I usually do right. like a bit of mixed media. Sorry, I know I'm throwing a lot at yeah, you. Yeah, okay. Um, or I like anything that kind of mixes genres. So I like maybe a mystery historical, or fantasy historical, or right, right. Um, fantasy is my other most read genre, I would say. And in fantasy, I love either like cozy fantasy, so I love Legends mm -hmm. and Lattes by Travis Baldry. Yeah, yeah. But I also feel like a lot of ones that pitch themselves as cozy fantasy don't get it right. <laughs> or I loved um, Chess of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson oh, as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or I also, I think in my fantasy, I like lyrical writing, so I love Erin Morgenstern. Um, yes. like the Night Circus and stuff like that. And yeah, I do read widely another genre as well. I read horror, I read contemporary, more literary stuff. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to throw what I love in every genre at you because there's a lot of information. Yeah, but you know, I really don't read fantasy, although I have okay. read Erin um, Morgan's turn. Yeah. She's kind of like light. Magic, light fantasy, really, yeah. Sort of almost like a, not quite magical realism, but that, yeah, yeah, a bit yeah. more like that. Um, we well, don't have to recommend me But fantasy. yeah, and I don't <laughs> that often read read crime. <laughs> However, actually, I think I've got a great recommendation for you, but it may well be something you've already read. But that's yes. okay. Maybe get some backups because I, I may will. have read some stuff. <laughs> I will, I will, I will. Yes. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I need to tell you, but I'm open to any suggestions because I read pretty much anything okay. as well. Is it time for me to pick some books? Yes. Excellent. Okay. Got your recommendation. Right, yes. So my first recommendation is a proper sort of straight crime book. It is okay. Patricia Highsmith's The Challenge of Mr. Ripley. I haven't read it! <laughs> oh my goodness, you're in for such a treat. You Fun. really are. I know there was an adaptation of it recently on mm -hmm. Netflix, which was brilliant, but mm -hmm. it was it was almost like too much of a, a slow burn. I see. Where the book, like the tension that she creates, mm -hmm. like you literally feel anxious that even though you know, Ripley is the one who's sort of, as it's a murder mystery, mm -hmm. I'm not anything away here, he's murdering people, but he's getting away with it. But you feel nervous that he's going to get found out, even though he's the bad guy. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Weirdly, your loyalties almost are with him. And, yeah. and I think the difference between this and maybe the adaptation, um, even though it was brilliant, um, 
he was a bit creepy in it, so you didn't feel like mm, you were rooting for him. Whereas in this, you just and actually in the film with Matt Damon, which they did in the noughties, again, mm. you were just like you just wanted him to get away with it. Like, <laughs> how you somehow... Anyway, that's a really great read. Perfect. She is that's an absolute masterclass in perfect sort of tense oh, writing. I'm really excited. I have wanted to read this one for a long time. So that's, oh, a, good, that's a good, good pick. Good. Okay, next um, one. So this one, I think, is has been in in my top three of books ever since I ever read it in like probably the nineties, and it is. <gasps> And it's one I consistently recommend to no people. No pressure. <laughs> um, it is Perfume, Ooh. the story of a murderer. Um, so again, it's got that, it's got a murderer in it. Okay. It's set in 18th century France. Um, and just the premise is a bit bonkers. I think if you like, said you like fantasy, there mm. is something that's a bit kind of unreal about this mm. character. He is, he's kind of born literally in the middle of this fish market to a, his mother was gutting fish and the description of Paris and the smells and that as you can imagine mm. 18th century all the muck and whatever mm. um, is incredible he has got this insane heightened sense of smell that's the running oh. thread throughout the book that's the you know that kind of perfume element mm. the way he describes scent the writer as in Patrick Suskin the writer mm -hmm. um, is it, you can't imagine describing smell. It's just mm. a weird thing to kind of have a con continue going through the book. Um, and he himself has no personal body odor, so he, which is weird. <laughs> this is kind of a side tangent to the book. But it's just that people feel uncomfortable around him because he's just odd. Mm. Uh, but he has this incredible sense of smell. I'm not going to give anything away about the murder element because okay. this book goes to a crazy place and it goes to an even madder place and then the finale is is insane <laughs> okay that's what i like to hear <laughs> sounds really good thank you so, so much um that's super weird it, mm -hmm. it, we will i like weird you will never forget this book okay oh my goodness it's so exciting <laughs> okay and my third one is uh ian banks the wasp factory Ooh. Um, a gothic, well it's a gothic horror on the front. Yeah. This I think was written in about the 80s or so. He's a, a British author. Um, he actually wrote um, some sci-fi fantasy under the name Ian M. Banks, which I haven't read any of because mm. I don't really read sci-fi. But this is like a classic, sort of in the vein of someone like Susan Hill, that sort of dark gothic. He's just a super creepy little boy. <laughs> There is a murder again. I can't even tell you, begin to describe what this is. It's just dark, uncomfortable writing, mm. very kind of like classic, you know, Daphne du Maurier. Mm. Um, that sort of, that just leaves you feeling edgy. There was another book by Susan Hill called The King of the Castle, and it's just about a horrible little boy being mean to another little boy. You know, it's just horrible people. Anyway, that, uh, fantastic again. Um, that sounds like something you've picked really amazing books I feel like I feel a lot of pressure but I, I feel like <laughs> your descriptions of all of these you've like tapped in on different things that I love but also books I, I'd never heard of either of these two no so which is well, exciting fantastic perfume de definitely I think it's one of those ones you know how these books just suddenly fly from TikTok mm. and I feel like perfume is one that will have a moment at some point yeah when people really discover this book it's just it's fun Wow. Well, I really hope you enjoyed it. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the recommendations. Excellent. <laughs>so I've literally just started reading the talented Miss Ripley but I wanted to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video and one of my favorite things in the world my serious light from serious readers you guys know 
I love my serious light. Today actually was the first day that felt kind of autumnal. It was dark and like dull and it was just the perfect time to work out my serious light. So if you don't know, this is a reading light that is made specifically for reading. It has this technology called daylight wavelength technology, which replicates this daylight spectrum as close as possible. And it's absolutely incredible. It feels like a breath of fresh air for the eyes. It just feels absolutely amazing on the eyes. It feels super natural in the eyes and it is perfect the days are getting darker to use as my reading light. I use it every day. I've used it all throughout summer, but I use it every single day, no matter what. But especially as the days are getting darker, it's super important to take care of our eyes, to avoid eye strain as we're reading. Look, we're all spending time reading these little words on the page. You know what I mean? We're all like, <laughs> You know, our eyes are doing a lot of work all the time. So something like this, I, I just adore it, guys. I love it so much. I have the high definition light. I have the one that is a dimmer as well that I showed you. So I do tend to have mine on the lowest light. I do quite like quite like a low light, but if you want a more intense light, you can turn it up. It also, my camera's really good at showing light. So it does look like, whoa, you know, but it doesn't look like that in real life. Like I can shine that in my eyes with no problem <laughs> like not that i suggest shining lights in your eyes but i'm just showing you it's not like it's super duper strong my camera just does a really good job of picking up light but um yeah i love it so much and i cannot recommend enough also if you craft if you knit if you crochet if you do jigsaws i think it'll be perfect for lighting all of those things as well so i have a code for you guys which is mwb24 and that will get you a hundred pounds off this high definition light a hundred pounds off and free uk delivery like i say whenever i mention this you can get it internationally i know a lot of you are international and they can put any plug on it that you need but my code is just for free uk delivery and i cannot recommend it enough i love it so much a hundred pounds off is an amazing amazing discount this code won't last forever so go check it out while you can i'll leave a link down below I cannot recommend it enough. I love it so much. I love my serious light. So you guys go check it out. I am going to continue to use it to do some more reading tonight and I'll check in with you in the morning when hopefully I'm halfway through the talented Mr. Ripley. Hello, beautiful humans. How are we doing? I'm trying to get the energy up because I'm feeling very low energy. <laughs> Not feeling the best. How are we doing? It's next day. I am halfway through the talented Mr. Ripley. The synopsis of this, Tom Ripley is like struggling a little bit in life, you know, money-wise, life-wise. He gets this opportunity to um go see like kind of just an acquaintance this guy doesn't really know his parents the guy's parents pay him to go and check up on him and he gets thrown into this world of luxury and abundance and richness and he may start killing to to stay in that world, shall we say. And this is very interesting. This one, you know, all of these books are actually quite old. Actually, let's talk about this for a second. I think I'm gonna finish this vlog really quick <laughs> because the books that Virginia chose are all so short. They were like under 300 pages. I think I could finish this vlog in the next couple of days. Cause like, I'm definitely gonna finish this in the next couple of hours. And then I've got reading sprints tonight with my patrons when I'm gonna start perfume. I think I could get really far into this just this evening. So that's good. But also they're all a little bit older which I think is good for me because I think I focus a lot on reading new releases. I focus a lot on reading new releases. And when I read older books, it's usually like classic classics like Jane Austen, Sherlock Holmes, you know, really much older books. And so I think it's good for me to be reading kind of books that were published. I think the other ones are like 80s, 90s, but this one is set, is published in, from 1955. Oh my God, you're 60 years you old. And it's just so interesting reading this book from this time period. Firstly, you know, as someone who loves a good old kind of like, you know, this isn't what I'd call a murder mystery because you know who's doing the killing, but it's kind of like a murder book, right? And I've read books like this that like pitch themselves. People say, oh, it's a murder mystery, it's a mystery, but it's not. It's like a book with murder in it where we're kind of following an unhinged character. And I've read quite a few like this and it's very interesting reading what I think is kind of the progenitor of these. And it reminds me of something like an elderly lady is up to no good. And it's interesting seeing how it's done for the first time. The writing style is interesting. You're very much in Tom Ripley's head. And when the book was being pitched to me, she said like, oh, there was an adaptation of it that I didn't love because he was creepier in that. Whereas in this, you're rooting for him. I don't know if I am rooting for Tom Ripley, if I'm honest with you. I don't know if in my reading experience I am. I think he is creepy <laughs> and a little bit like unhinged. I'm not on either team. I don't want him to be caught. I don't want him to get away with it. I'm just like ambivalently watching. But that writing style where you're very much in his head reminds me, like bear with me because it has been um, probably over a decade since I read this book, but it really reminds me of Catcher in the Rye. 
for some reason where like you're struggling like a young man in his 20s who's like struggling with like I could not tell you this not to catch on a ride but for some reason I just feel myself like that's so raven like I don't know <laughs> that's the future but like take it back in time to when I was reading that book it's this very dry sense of writing style I just got lots of little thoughts and I'm not going into any depth in any of these I'm kind of bouncing between topics but there is kind of a suggestion that everyone thinks that Tom Ripley is gay and perhaps the kind of like you know he says he isn't but he's been accused of being so and I say accused because like in the time period it's viewed very differently accused of being so many different times and how that's like warped his perception of himself and whether he is and the kind of like dynamics that occur within his relationships with men in his life is very interesting and I feel like it's you know for this time this was probably quite influential in unpacking in a literary kind of way the, the the attitudes towards gay men and like what people think gay men are gonna do to them um which I just think is fascinating so I don't know if I'm enjoying well I'm enjoying it that's what I'm gonna say I don't know if I'm loving it you know I don't know if I'm like oh I'm loving this but I think there's a lot of different little elements of it that I'm like huh that's really interesting interesting so that's kind of how I'm feeling at the moment. I'm literally just gonna go finish it and then I'll check in with you once I have done so. We do quickly have some more book mail. This is not anything you guys have sent me. It's from a publisher again. It could be something I've requested. It could not be. Let's find out what it is together. Oh, I think, I, yes, I did request this. This is exciting. We have got A Pirate's Life of Fatigue by Rebecca Thorne, which is pitched as a cozy fantasy. And I'm always looking for more cozy fantasy. Kianth and Raina must strike a deal with the local lord to secure his aid. Their mission, to capture Serenia, a notorious river pirate and scourge of supply chains. Begrudgingly, the couple joins forces with Bobby, one of the lord's constables, who's absolutely determined to capture the pirate. Except lawmaker and lawbreaker have a complicated history and it might jeopardize everything. Kiant and Rayner watch this relationship break from afar and it quickly becomes apparent that the pair need all the help they can get. Luckily, matchmaking is Rayner's favorite pastime. The dragon eggs may have to wait. So it does sound romantic cozy fantasy, which isn't always my favorite thing, but I think the kind of setting of it sounds very interesting. So thank you so much, Book Break, for sending that over. I'm very much looking forward to it. But yeah, let's go finish The Talented Mr. Ripley and see what I think of our first book for this vlog, which I think I'm going to plow through all these books at quite an alarming pace. I'm a little bit deliriously tired, so <laughs> bear with me. But I just finished The Talented Mr. Ripley and I think I'm gonna settle on four stars for this. I did think about giving it 3.5, but I think, yeah, I think I'm gonna give this a four. Let me talk about some of my negatives and I'll talk about my positives. My negatives are, this has moments in it that a lot of like literary, clever authors like to have. Like it reminds me Donna Tartt does this a lot and I love me a bit of Donna Tartt, but she does it a lot. Or just like any kind of like modern classic book tends to do. It tends to be a hallmark of what people like see as a modern classic. It's just like long sections that have no relevance to the novel. Just talking shit! And I love a little bit of an offshoot. I love a little bit of like a, you know, what's the point in this, but I'm enjoying it. But these are more just like boring, mundane little moments that are long. That should be like a conversation. A conversation about nothing, right? A conversation about nothing between two characters or just a thought or like someone booking a restaurant or like meeting these side characters who meet nothing. If you've read these books, you know what I mean? These moments that you're like, this serves nothing. <laughs> but the author wants to write for some reason. I don't know if it's like, I am not up to date on my Patricia Highsmith law. So I don't know, is she at the height of her career at this point? Or was this thing that broke her into being renowned? But it reminds me of when an author gets a bit big for their boots and and decides they don't need editing. <laughs> just like, you know, Stephen King's at this point, he can just write what he wants. Whereas this is more of like a literary version of it. Or these authors just think they're so clever and like really are diving into the human psyche. But there's moments where it just works. There's moments where it just, just doesn't. And they're just chatting shit. Yeah, there were also the moments where it felt to me like thoughts were unfinished or moments were unfinished or a little bit underdeveloped. And I know that's like another like kind of more literary style of writing where things are like mysterious or whatever. But like, I hope I'm I'm, I hope I'm conveying to you. There's moments in other books I go, oh, I love that this was a little bit unfinished or a little bit left in the left, left uh, unsaid, right? That I love. But in those moments, it's done with a flourish. You know, I feel like some more like beautiful lyrical writing styles. Is where there's like it leaves on a on an absence, it leaves on a moment. Whereas this is just like 
and not telling anything, deal with it. My positives, however, I can see the quality of this. I can look at this book and go, wow, okay. I can see how you've made me care for these characters in such a short space of time. I can see how they're so real almost. I can see how this is a fairly mun, not mundane story, it's not a word, people are dying, but it's a fairly like small, you know, or you've written it in a small way. You've written it in a very dry way, but I still care. You know, I can see that this is a great book. And I do think it was interesting. It was an interesting reading experience. It is also interesting. I've been reading some reviews and, you know, I was talking about how I, I feel like in my reading of this, this is a critique of negative attitudes towards homosexuality. You know, at this time, was being gay still illegal? Maybe. I feel like it was around this time it, it got legalised. So, you know, you're, you're dealing with extreme prejudices. And I felt like it was a critique of that. However, some people read this as like, oh, gay equals evil. You know, the villain is gay and thus it's saying being gay is wrong. And I, I think it's interesting in how you can have those two different readings. I wouldn't have thought of that as a reading until I read some of the reviews. And so I guess like it's up to the individual to make their mind up. Someone did mention, I think, that Patricia uh, Highsmith is a lesbian. Uh, I'm not, don't fact check me on that. I just read that in a review, <laughs> I've rejected it. But so that that leads me towards it's my perception. And it's interesting because everyone's like accusing him of being gay, but he's almost like, like he's almost either suppressed his, 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 you know, sexual preferences so deeply that he's become almost asexual or he is almost asexual. Like it's not like, it's more jealousy that he is driven by rather than lust which is interesting. I, I think it's a very interesting book. I'm glad to have read it. I'm glad that I was, you know, it was chosen for me. But I think a four star is where I land. I'm now going to start Perfume, The Story of a Murderer. All of these books, we've got, this is, this is the other one. Uh, I'm just gonna check in on half, when I'm halfway because they're so short. But yeah, next one is Perfume. I'm gonna make a little bit of a start on the audiobook tonight. I don't know how far in I'll get. But I'm super interested to see what I think. One of my patrons has read this actually and said it was interesting. So another modern classic for us. <laughs> but I'll check in with you in the morning, hopefully, once I'm halfway through. But yeah, I'm really enjoying reading. I feel like I'm speeding, speeding through at the moment. So I'll check in with you once I'm a bit of the ways through this. <laughs> Good morning friends. I am just under halfway through Perfume, The Story of a Murderer and I'm loving it. Part of me is thinking this could be a five star and it's such an unexpected five star and I almost like, I'm so tentative to give this a five star because I feel like it's so different to anything else I've ever given a five star in my entire life. But I'm kind of shook. I am loving it. I think this is a really special book. So basically all you should know about this is that it's set in 18th century France, in Paris specifically, the first half. And we meet, we see a boy being born who goes on to have this incredibly intense, incredibly amazing sense of smell. Like he smells, he can like identify at the drop of the hat, identify mix of smells at the drop of the hat. Oh my goodness. Listen. You smell that shit? And that's all I really think you should know going into it. I think you should kind of go into this blind. I thought the opening of this, absolutely incredible absolutely incredible opening to this book where he his mother gives birth to him whilst gutting fish behind the stool of gutting fish with the bloods and the guts around him and yeah and then he just goes on this life where miraculously he lives like after trial and trial and trial and he's this very interesting character he's kind of like I don't know, always, always described as like crouching and like, you know, I don't know, like hovering in the dark spaces, but like having this obsession with smell and just the descriptions of smell in this are incredible. I mean, so often I think books really rely on just sight out of the senses. I suppose what we can hear as well, like I guess like just, no, but like a, a, aside from dialogue, sounds aren't described a lot, but like what you can see is constantly what is described in books. Like what a fucking character's wearing. I could go my whole life never hearing what a character's wearing ever again. Never again. <laughs> Don't you do that. Don't you do that ever again. And so I think to have a book that is so strongly focused on sense, so strongly to focus on describing how things smell, is such an interesting, interesting route to go down. And I, this is just a book I, I mean, 
<laughs> kind of like in awe of it. Like I'm gonna like, what the fuck is this? I don't read stuff like this a lot. Sorry, Freddie's scratching if you can hear. I don't read stuff like this a lot. It's very literary, it's very clever, but it's got this very unique tone of voice and sense of perspective that I'm very much enjoying. So yeah, I, I don't know what I'm gonna think of it by the end, but part of me wants to give this a five star. Like I'm loving it and I feel kind of clever. I feel kind of like, I feel kind of intelligent reading it. But yeah, I don't know. I, I'm very much enjoying it. It's very rainy today. It's a perfect day for reading. Especially something like this. It's dark and dirty and dingy in Paris at the height of like unhygienist <laughs> like everything's like a mess and I don't know I think the setting is very interesting I think the character it's interesting you're not attached to him as a character like you know some people are like oh I want to be attached to main characters I didn't feel attached like you're not you're almost like viewing the world through this kind of warped lens that he is or just like smells like <laughs> but, like following you everywhere I don't know I'm so glad that I'm reading this for this video because I don't think I would have ever read this in my life if it were not for this video. So I'm very much enjoying it. I'll chat to you probably this evening, once I finish it. I'm gonna go edit some of this video and then uh, just carry on reading. So yeah, I'm feeling very hopeful about this one. I'm really enjoying it. It's also got this kind of like wry sense of humor about certain things that I'm enjoying. I'm very much enjoying it. Hopefully, uh, it just feels like crazy to give this a five star. I've never given anything like this a five star in my life. Anyways, I'll see you later. But I'm very much enjoying it. I'm glad to be reading this because I don't think I ever would have read it otherwise. <laughs> what in the ever living fuck did I just read? You need some therapy. So I finished this book. I'm genuinely, I don't know what to say to you. I don't know. It's quite late. I probably should be probably just checking in the morning. Uh, but I said to my sprints the other night, I said, film a check-in. Everyone says I sound like I say chicken. I should probably film this chicken in the morning. Um, anyways, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I just read. I don't have to talk to you about it. I don't have to talk to you about it. How am I gonna talk to you about this book? Um, I just read like, I was reading some reviews, trying to piece together my thoughts. And I read like one review of this woman being like, oh, I love fragrances. This book is every perfumer's dream. My quest for the best fragrances. This is amazing. The description, the words. I was like, okay girl, this is a choice considering the second half of this book. I mean, I know I sounded a bit like that in the first half, but uh, I think we've all read the second half. Putting <laughs> it together. And then I just read this other review. Okay, if you're gonna read this book, don't listen to what I'm about to say. Skip ahead for when it no longer says spoilers, spoilers on the screen. But a review from Bryce, which is hidden because of spoilers. Bryce gave it five stars. Let me just, let me just make you aware this is about to spoil everything about the book. But I need you, if you're not interested in reading this book, I need you to understand what I've just read. Okay. Because sometimes you just have to read about a 17th century perfumer who may or may not be the Antichrist and goes on a killing spree before starting a giant omnisexual fuckfest and being voluntarily cannibalized. Yeah. 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 Let's just say the devil made me do it. I don't know what to, I don't know. <laughs> Okay, here's the thing. I'm giving it four stars. The first half of this I thought could be five stars. The second half of this, I know it sounds absolutely wild at the end there. That wildness is like the last 20 pages. It absolutely goes balls to the wall <laughs> crazy. <laughs> like loses its shit. But the bit from the second half up until that point was boring. It was boring. It was boring. So like, although I'm gonna say a shock, I have to explain to you I was bored for a lot of the second half of this. I think a lot of the first half is so great because you're in Paris and it's so like, evocative and all the different scenes are so strong, almost like a movie, right? I could imagine it like a movie. The little vignettes that you pass through are so vivid, right? Whereas I feel like a lot of the second half of this is just kind of like traipsing about and like sitting places and going, like it didn't feel as vivid. It didn't feel as, as you know, like capturing an aesthetic, capturing a moment, capturing a time, capturing a, an image, right? But that ending, <laughs> Holy shit, I don't, I don't know if I can actually say anything to you guys that is anything of worth about this book. And this, both these books, both this and the Talented of Miss Ripley, I'm starting to see a trend in them where it's like, kind of like li literary books with a lot of weirdness to them, like a weird element, like a little bit of fucked up, a little bit of weird element, you know, like Tom Ripley's going and killing everyone. 
this one. <laughs> I'm going to say I like murder mysteries. <laughs> but these are just been murder books, not murder mysteries. But, you know, whatever. I, yeah, I, I'm giving it four stars. I don't really know what I just read. I do think, I do think the writing style was something very, very interesting. And with a certain kind of, again, like a wry tone of voice. Again, that's another similarity between the two. It's just kind of like twisted and like nasty and like throughout the whole book just a little bit like uncomfortable I don't know I enjoyed it I don't know what I don't mean this this I haven't said anything of any worth to you guys I don't know I mean kind of in a state of shock I've just used the meme the other day so I can't use it again but you know if I could uh, I'm a complete state of shock I forgot what I was gonna say the other Sir Edwards meme put that in right now I kind of loved the ending the ending was great but I still feel like it's a four star because that last, the, you know, the second half just wasn't as interesting, but j I loved the craziness. I loved where it went to. Those two scenes where it just went like, holy shit, what am I, it kind of descended out of nowhere instantly because it's all to do with sense, isn't it? Anyways, um, so yeah, that's my thoughts. I'm gonna go to bed. I'm gonna read The Wasp Factory tomorrow. I don't know what to expect. I know on the front it says a gothic horror, which is gonna be fun. But um, yeah, I feel like we've had pretty good luck with these books so far. So The Wasp Factory will be read tomorrow and we'll go from there. But I, I don't feel capable. I mean, it's like 10, it's like 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock. I don't know if I'm capable of saying anything more interesting about this, sorry. This is like, I feel like Virginia has given me the kind of books where I should say, clever intelligent things like if I was like studying them in English class you know what I mean I feel the need to like psychoanalyze them but Freddie's snoring we're gonna go to bed bye <laughs>
<laughs> I think I just want to be reading happy things today. And this isn't that. This isn't that. It's very sad. So anyways, we're going to Knoll Park this afternoon, which is one of my favorite places. Lots of deer. So that'll make me happy. And I'll probably finish this on the way there, all the way there and back. So I'll let you know what, what I think when I finish it. But I just kind of want to get it done now. I'm not enjoying it. I'm not enjoying it. I'm not enjoying reading it. So sorry. So sorry. <laughs> it's me, not you. Anyways, let's go see some deer and finish this book. Hello friends. Apologies if I look a bit windswept. We just got back from a walk. Also, I don't know what Freddie's doing. He's scratching some, oh. Freddie, <laughs> come sit. Come sit. Go sit. Oh no. <laughs> No, he thinks we're playing. Do you think we're playing? <laughs> Are you a good boy? Are you a good boy? I need to film a clip. Okay, I'm just gonna leave him there and we can talk because what I'm about to say isn't gonna be very exciting. I finished The Wasp Factory. If you're gonna hear lots of Freddy noises throughout this, bear with. <laughs> Um, I don't really have a lot more thoughts to you because I just continued to... <laughs> because I just continued to hate this. I just continued to hate it. Um... <laughs> you can... <laughs> Pretty, you're really distracting me. Right, let's just like, let's just talk, let me talk about it and then we can play. Um, it's complete. <laughs> Wait, let me go see if we can find Tom to go play with him. Okay, I'm back. Um, yeah. <laughs> I continue to hate this. It just continued with descriptions of people, our main character and his brother, just killing animals nonstop. It was just a very unpleasant reading experience. I didn't enjoy the process of reading this. And also I want to amend what I was saying before about my rating being my enjoyment of a book. I think the issue is, I'm often judging a book on its quality because I'm reading books that are my taste in books. Often books I'm reading, are books I was excited to read. So we've already got that interest, that first level of interest of having an inkling this might be my kind of writing style or might be the kind of plot I like or whatever, right? And then, so I'm interested in it, thus I'm able to judge it on how well it works for me as a reader who's interested in that. Something like this, this is not my taste in books, right? For a multitude of reasons. And thus, I feel like I'm almost not able to judge it on how good it is because I'm just so not down for what this is putting out there. <laughs> Like, I don't feel like this is really a gothic horror, but I think perhaps we've bastardized the, the you know, term gothic horror on booktube, because what we refer to it as is like, like Mexican gothic. Like, when I think of gothic horror, I think Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. Like, I think of like something with a certain atmosphere, and I really didn't feel like this did, even though I had the potential with it being on this Scottish island. I just really disliked it. <laughs> I don't know what to say to you. I really disliked it. I feel bad, but I just don't think this is for me. I also don't know whether to be angered by the ending or like dislike the end. I can't quite make up what I think. I mean, obviously this is published in like 1984. So I can't see that ending being written today or if it was, it would be for like inflammatory reasons where I think this author probably just thought they were doing something clever. Um, it's like surrounding, no, actually I'm not, I can't say what's around it because it's a massive spoiler, but you know, it, it would be for an inflammatory reason rather than I think this author just thought, oh my God, that's a good twist, <laughs> you know? But I thought the ending was like, really? I've had it. Enough. You know what they For me, there was just nothing driving the plot forward. And I sometimes do enjoy books when nothing happens. Like everyone levels that criticism at the night circus, right? But I'm just like, yeah, but it's great. Because <laughs> like, I love the writing in that. I'm, I was reading this like, why am I reading this? Why am I reading this? Why am I reading this? Why, why? Why am I reading this? So I'm so sorry. So that, that, that brings us to our rating for this episode of Year of Rex, which by my calculations is a 3.33, which feels low because I enjoyed two books from this video. It's just brought down by the two that I'm giving this. So where does that put us on the leaderboard? Hang on, I need to go back to an old video. So a 3.33 puts us, puts it on par with what my subscribers, <laughs> subscribers episode, but it does put it 
like in the latter half of the of the list, but that doesn't feel right because I did enjoy those two books. I think it probably needed a five, didn't it? And Perfume had that potential. It just lost me in the second half. So it was super fun though, getting book recommendations from a Waterstones bookseller. Like I said, I enjoyed two of the books. So I still feel like it's a win, even though the rating is a bit low, but the Waterstones books I did as well as you guys did. So. <laughs> But yeah, it was a super fun experience and it was super fun reading some older books, reading books that I probably wouldn't have ever gotten around to. I think The Talented Mr. Ripley is probably the only one of these I would have ever gotten around to on my own. Um, but it was really fun getting through these books, getting to see what other people have enjoyed and um, yeah, getting some different recommendations. So yeah, let me know what you thought of any of these books if you have read them. I'd love to know your thoughts because these aren't really books that I have heard a ton of people's thoughts on. So if you've read any of these books, I'd really love to know. And thank you so much for watching another video and I'll see you very soon in another one. Bye!